कोई नहीं Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this discussion today. Uh, we have a couple of amazing people joining us. Uh, so we have Ankita, Bobby, Sridhar, Anish uh, from uh, different parts in uh, a South Asian region, and uh, obviously Anupam, who is leading our Misfits Initiative. And uh, thank you, Tommy, for uh, putting this together for us. Uh, glad to. Host all of you today. Uh, my name is Abhijit. I lead the uh, Rupchi Ecosystem Foundation as an executive director, and uh, we've been hosting this Misfits uh, series uh, for primarily social entrepreneurs doing some amazing work in our region. And uh, today we thought, hey, let's uh, build something around the fintech uh, domain. Uh, it's obviously the buzzword uh, in today's times, uh, and with the recent uh, Coinbase. Uh, IPO. I think uh, crypto is another uh, uh, emerging buzzword that's on everyone's mind. So uh, let's hear from the experts out there, and uh, I'll pass it on to Ankita, uh, our host, to take it forward. Uh, hello, everyone. I, on behalf of Ruksh e uh, Ecosystem Foundation, welcome you all to this regional misfit event. And to start with, I would like to introduce you to fintech. So anything you do online, like from making a transaction online or paying through your mobile, or even as simple as checking your uh, bank balance online, you are already a part of multi-billion-dollar industry that is fintech. And fintech, as simple as it seems, like finance plus technology, it is. It includes wide range of technologies, products, and business models. It can be anything related to a crowdfunding to a robo advisory to a virtual currency to a cashless transaction so in last 10 years only we have noticed a 100 billion dollar jump in the investment in fintech industry and uh, to tell us about more about the impact of fintech and the future of fintech we have these amazing panelists with us today and uh, i would like you to introduce uh, to our first panelist mr shridhar Mr. Sridhar is a founder of Billion Cart. Bill, uh, Billion Cart manages network for market uh, place, places platforms, and he is also associated with Pesa Book. Pesa Book is like an online ERP platform which helps in uh, user fr fr friendly, uh, hassle free uh, invoicing and uh, tracking your expenses. And then we have Mr. Bobby from Indonesia. Mr. Bobby has a local uh, consultancy in. Indonesia, which helps in IT uh, solutions, risk management, and product management. And uh, then we have Mr. Anish. Mr. Anish is a founder of a new bank, uh, neo bank, Pink Capital. And Pink Capital focuses on financial inclusion of low and middle income group. So I would like uh, our uh, panelists to introduce themselves. And uh, I would like to start with Mr. Sridhar. And I want three things from you, sir. Like first is what is fintech to you in your introduction? Like three elements I really want that you should include. What is fintech to you, and what has been your journey, and what, according to you, is the future of fintech? Thanks, Ankita, and thanks, Anupam, for organizing this. And hello, Abhijit and Bobby, and Anish, and all the participants. And uh, thank you for joining us on a Friday evening. I know there's a lot going on, so. Uh, here we are again, zooming. So uh, really quick, uh, uh, my background, um, you know, it, it can probably take up the whole session. So, uh, you know, I'll keep it brief. Relevant to this is uh, I spent quite a bit of time consulting in across Europe and US, uh, particularly in large banks, uh, doing M&A, post M&A uh, transformation across various domains within the financial industry. Um, including you know, all the way from wealth management to uh, cards to liquidity to wholesale banking and treasury. So that's kind of a, a slice of um, finance as a domain where I got some exposure and that's that I carried on that to you know deploying uh, several solutions, uh, reorganizing um, you know enterprises uh, and calibrating them for you know future growth. 
uh, and in the U.S., as, as some of you probably know, uh, there's uh, there's a lot of mergers and demergers that uh, that take place based on regulatory environments, based on uh, other events. So that's kind of some uh, you know context, if you will, uh, in a you know in a global sense, uh, where I got my exposure. And we dealt uh, a lot with Southeast Asia. You know, Nike as a brand, for example, and its traders around the globe. Uh, was one of our wholesale customers for a large bank. I won't mention the name, but you know we, we did a lot of work with them in the wholesale treasury department. So in liquidity, we helped another client. So there was a lot of global exposure, but it was based out of uh, primarily US and some out of Europe. Uh, that's from a corporate and enterprise standpoint, but I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. Um, so in terms of uh, uh, fintech to me is the intersection of finance and technology, right? So when uh, the enablement of solutions um, that are uh, more cutting edge, uh, more, um, more, if you will, user friendly or consumer friendly, and consumer could be a business or a, a, a pure uh, customer or a, or a pure denizen or a citizen. And uh, that's really that intersection is where the beauty lies. I mean, that's that's really where the, all the possibilities lie, and it's a it's an ocean. I mean, to me, one definition is fintech is an ocean. So, I mean, it's fairly wide, as you mentioned, um, and there are lots of subdomains and categories within fintech as an ocean. And uh, and uh, you know, this you could have several sessions, obviously, to uh, introduce people to aspects of it and the new trends and things that are happening. Uh, from new banks to you know what started as wallets in India, for example, and where wallets are today, uh, wallets are being converted into banks now very shortly. So that's the headline as of two days ago. So, so a lot happening there. Uh, what it means to me is it's pretty exciting. I mean, I always, as an entrepreneur, I always wanted to be in the midst of a transaction. So uh, that's my that's my business mind. So I want to be in the middle of a transaction. I don't care what I build. I have to be in the middle of a buyer, a seller, a trade. Like I look at it as a black box and I provide value in between and I cream something off the top and that's how I make my money. So all the models that we have built and Billion Card is a broadly a holding company concept and we are in the very early stages of rolling out uh, you know, vertical SaaS products and you know, Paisa Book, as you mentioned, is one example of that. So, and there are many, I mean, we have plans for a loan marketplace, we have plans for a loan exchange where you refinance and so on and so forth. So I'll leave it at that. I mean, that's a long-winded answer to your uh, introduction, but um, you know, we we'll am happy to field questions as we go along. We, we have a small panel and, uh, and a group, so we'll be, uh, keep it open and let Bobby and Anish uh, chime in, please. Thank you. Thank you, Sridharji. And uh, yes, over to you, Mr. Bobby. Again, I'll repeat, I want three elements. What is FinTech to you? And what is what impact it has created so far? Like how much impact you have created so far in fintech, and what is the future of fintech according to you? Okay. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity that you gave to me. Uh, let me introduce myself again. My name is Bobby Yonika Putra, but just call me Bobby. I'm coming from Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, in daily basis, uh, I building my uh, own consultant, risk consultant. Uh, in Jakarta, Indonesia, uh, since uh, November 2016, but uh, we already uh, published uh, in the market uh, in uh, 2018. Uh, for me, uh, in Indonesia, we have uh, two uh, two largest fintechs in Indonesia, like uh, Dana and GoPay, as you uh, maybe know. Um, the uh, Indonesia have like uh, some. Uh, one of the, the largest population in uh, in uh, in the globe, uh, we have like uh, maybe uh, like uh, one and a half a billion people uh, in Indonesia, uh, but uh, some of them uh, we have uh, like uh, they they don't have like mobile phones or uh, financially uh, bank it. That's why uh, we we have like uh, like. Uh, the new markets are in uh, fintech. That's why uh, Dana and also uh, GoPay already raised uh, in uh, us in Indonesia. Uh, for me, uh, fintech, uh, we we will we will use uh, uh, fintech uh, for our uh, daily operational to pay uh, maybe like uh, some operational costs or something like that. 
uh, in the future, I think uh, fintech will uh, be like collaborated uh, in banking, but I think uh, fintech cannot replace the banks. But uh, I think fintech will be like uh, make some collaboration in uh, in the banks. I think that's all. Thank you, Bobby. And Thank you so much. <laughs> now we have Mr. Anish. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. And uh, so a brief introduction. So I started my entrepreneurial journey a couple of years back where I started a agri-tech company to help farmers in northern states uh, to grow more commercial crops uh, and get out of your wheat and uh, MSP cycle of wheat and rice crops. And there is when, you know, where I understood uh, how the rural ecosystem works in India and, you know, how, what are the major challenges uh, in terms of financial services that exist there. So my, so my, what is FinTech to me, uh, you know, would be solving your core problem for the rural masses, you know, making financial products available to them, uh, which are, which weren't available to them maybe a couple of years back. You know, the, with, with the technology and with the, with the fintech coming, this is possible now where, you know, every product, you can co-create any imaginable product, you know, with, with a bank, with a NBFC, with an with a insurance player, and, you know, present it to the rural masses. Yeah, and that is, you know, that is what fintech uh, is to me. In terms of, you know, future, uh, I would say, you know, fintech, I, I would categorize fintech into, you know, four categories. You know, one would be your payment infrastructure. And, uh, and in terms of payment infrastructure, we are doing really well, either urban market or rural market, where you're in rural AEPS, Aadhaar Enabled Payment System, is, is growing phenomenally well. Then you have your you know, credit market, credit tech, where a different players, you, a, 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 any, any, any person can get a loan right now, uh, either in rural or semi-rural, maybe it's microfinance companies, maybe it's your, you know, your players like early salary, and in terms of uh, the future we are looking at in short tech and, you know, wealth tech is something uh, I would say is still in the very early stages where there are not many players and we need some innovation on the wealth tech and, you know, in short tech space. Thank you, Anish. And uh, I want to ask my first question from Anish only since he yeah. is working in rural area. So there are a lot of problems in the society and there are a lot of intersectional and uh, cross-cutting problems. And uh, so how do you think fintech solutions can be applied and deployed in healthcare or uh, education sector or livelihood? See, in terms of fintech solutions, when you talk about you know, education, uh, any any services, any financial services uh, that you want to uh, sell in rural spaces, the first and foremost thing is financial education and digital education, right? So every every at every step you need to have financial education as as a curriculum or as a as a pain point that you need to address. And you know education and providing financial services goes hand in hand when talking to a rural market. In terms of healthcare, uh, I I would say. Even healthcare is very very you know uh, in in a very early stages where insurance selling insurance to rural audience is is very difficult where they don't understand the long term benefits of insurance so they want to see instant results right so they want to see the claim either you have a health insurance uh, so we so i'll give you an example of health insurance so we have a product which is called hospi cash you know which is very well received in uh, uh, rural audiences we have sold over 10000 policies and what it does is it gives them medical insurance uh, at, at a very cheap price, which is rupees 300 rupees a month, right? But for, the, for, for us to make them understand, to get a life insurance, which is long-term, is very difficult. So it's a, it's a major awareness is needed. And that is what fintechs are, are, fintechs are trying to do, uh, the separate fintechs trying to do, where they are awareing people, where you know, they, they are making them understand the importance of either savings or the importance of low cost debt or importance of your insurance. Wow. Thank you, Anish, for like explaining us beautifully the financial inclusion part. And uh, so next, I would like to move towards the consumer side. So, uh, so Sridhar, sir, according to you, what can be the evolution of consumer fintech in near future? Um, I think broad. I mean, um, you, you're seeing early 
trends. Um, obviously, the loan mechanism uh, and its uh, repercussions are very interesting. But uh, you're seeing peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, uh, you know, scale and also go bust. Both has happened. Um, but in terms of uh, in terms of what we see coming up, uh, it is this it is this concept that is not yet in the market. I mean, this neo bank concept is is still you know yet to roll out effectively to consumers. So I still have a hard time dealing with uh, whether it's public sector banks or private banks, um, you know, the lack of tech in some of them, even the new private banks, you know, I have had lots of recent experiences as a consumer uh, where it's, it's still challenging to utilize their application, their uh, user experience is, is pretty poor on a scale of one to 10. And uh, some of the features and uh, functionality are pretty poor. In terms of market opportunity, I see you know huge potential for um, the uh, this buy now pay later concept. You know, is, is still is still something from a consumer standpoint that's you know enables um, goods to be sold uh, for vendors, for manufacturers, for uh, sellers, and for other platforms, digital or otherwise. And then there's this EMI concept in India, which has now become buy now pay later on the on the fintech platforms. Um, uh, with uh, you know uh, instant loans, if you will, uh, for uh, any anything from white goods to you know education to what have you. So <clears throat> I see a huge potential there uh, for growth. Um, I see uh, I see um, uh, a future where, um, from a consumer standpoint, housing loans are still not competitive in India. They're very competitive in in the U.S. and other advanced countries. I see a future where instead of you're at the, at the at the bottom of the cycle right now, we are about 6.85% across most providers, but I see a point differential making a huge difference in, in lending. Uh, so you, you're going to see marketplaces that compete for your business and you're going to see, you know, a few paisa difference or penny difference in, in loans. And uh, you know that's another potential for growth. At this point in time, pretty much you get you know the same structure and the same offering from all banks. So from a consumer point, you know those are a couple of things, but you know there's there's a lot more. Just the banking experience itself uh, needs to take a leap, uh, and uh, you know slowly and steadily as as new banks mature, you will see some of that. So. Uh, it but uh, in relation to this only, I just wanted to ask you, like, do you think this uh, fintech will be a social uh, problem solving tool or a profit making tool in near future? Um, you could look at it both ways. I mean, one is, you know, as, as Anish pointed out, and he's got ground level experience, you know, uh, I think he's, he's well positioned to talk about it. And he's seen some inroads. But it, it is a challenge. The reality is, you know, this apart from all the glitz and glamour of headlines and startups and, you know, the buzzwords and all that, the reality is penetrating the bottom of the pyramid is not that easy. So in terms of pure social impact on the ground, uh, whether it is to uh, take uh, the education aspect, the reach aspect. So I have m myself participated in a lot of them where funding to rural uh, women groups, self-help groups, um, you know, the legit papa example, right? I mean, uh, and and people who are um, uh, beauticians who are working for uh, urban, uh, uh, you know, service providers. Um, these are all areas where the bottom of the pyramid has been impacted and I've seen that firsthand. And that is thanks to FinTech and applications that are sitting on top of, you know, or lending or, uh, or other, uh, you know, service provision from a banking standpoint. Uh, but, um, its social impact is going to be limited uh, in the sense of, uh, you know, reach and access. Uh, and as broadband penetrates rural areas and as a mobile penetrates the rural areas, you'll see a lot more ad adoption as well as this change in behavior, change in, uh, you know, uh, knowledge, uh, which is the first step to starting to utilize these. So that's my thought on that. And you think that profit will flow? Like if we target the masses through this, the profit will flow? Um, again, you'll have to divide, um, you know, these um, startups or these uh, for businesses will have to divide. I mean, it's like, uh, it's this uh, cl age old classic. I don't know if Bobby can relate to this, but what we 
we think of from an from an if I wear my investor hat, what we are expecting from startups is that the MAU and DAU, the monthly average usage and the daily average usage, and the scale will come from a uh, from a location like India, right? I mean, from the bottom of the pyramid. But uh, your your profit margins and your um, uh, if you will, uh, revenue uh, growth will come from probably urban areas or probably out of India. So it, it really depends on your business. So um, not all, uh, you know, uh, you can't put you know, one blanket uh, framework for all of them. Uh, they'll have to really determine whether they're going to achieve scale and then, you know, uh, achieve the revenue uh, and margins, profit margins, or, you know, or vice versa. So it, it, there are a couple of players, I don't want to mention names, but you know, we can think of uh, great examples within India. Um, uh, you know, sorry, Bobby, if you're not familiar with some of these, uh, but uh, a lot of them uh, have been uh, funded very well, uh, you know, but again, uh, profitability is, is a long shot. Um, they're making, uh, you know, the, one of them is a competitor by a book and there are a few of them actually. Uh, and uh, they've, they've made a lot of inroads, they've raised a lot of capital, but there's no question of profitability at all. It, it's at some future stage, uh, you know, they will own all of the transaction is the hope. So uh, that's where the answer to your question on profitability, you know, gets kicked out uh, the door, if you will. But at the same time, the social and this doesn't kind of go together. Um, so people have to come up with strategies that are individual, that are very focused on what problem it is that they are solving. And based on that, they have to build a business around it. And uh, thank you, sir. And uh, Bobby, I would like to have your inputs on this on with respect to Indonesia, because we would like to hear what's going on in, in Indonesia. Okay, thank you so much uh, for the question. Actually, I, uh, I would say, uh, I would like to uh, have some uh, perspective uh, with Mr. Uh, Sridhar. I think uh, fintech should be uh, people facing and has uh, like a social mission. Um, like uh, in Indonesia, we have maybe uh, you know about Amarta. Amarta, uh, some of uh, they actually they have uh, some of business uh, like growing min bank um, in uh, Bangladesh. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why, right. yeah. I think uh, fintech uh, can in microfinancing. Be, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, fintech uh, like Amarta or something like that uh, can have like a social mission. Uh, that's why uh, Mr. Sridhar uh, said about uh, maybe uh, in the future, uh, some of fintech uh, has a social mission uh, like Grameen Bank. I think uh, this is like uh, rightly or, or wrongly, uh, traditional banks uh, Actually, uh, they have like reputation for ignoring the needs of customer or being slow to adopt a new service based on changing demands. But I think uh, fintech is uh, com uh, completely uh, opposite about that. Uh, fintech uh, can like uh, accept uh, some of uh, people, the poor people, uh, which is uh, they actually uh, unbankable. That's why I think uh, fintech. Uh, will be like some of uh, the answer about uh, the poor people to have like uh, some loan or uh, to make it uh, their life uh, will be better in the future. That's why I, I actually uh, agree uh, the perspective uh, from Schrader about uh, the fintech uh, will be have a social mission in the future. And uh, so I uh, follow up on this, like I would like to ask you, do you think this digital world has imposed, like as a consultant, would you, do, do you feel that some of the industries or some of the businesses are getting impacted because of FinTech or digital burden, which has been imposed? Hmm. Yeah, uh, I think uh, some of uh, like, uh, some of area will be impacted, uh, will be also impacted uh, for, uh, for this. Uh, some some of them like uh, <clears throat> we have like uh, digitalization uh, in healthcare. I think uh, when we uh, when we uh, when we have like uh, the the fastest uh, increasing uh, increase increasing uh, in the uh, fintech. I think uh, like um, 
some of the area will be also impacted, like uh, healthcare fintech and also educational uh, fintech uh, will be uh, also increased when uh, we have like a social impact uh, for the people. I think some of the uh, some of the area will uh, will also increase. Uh, thank you very much. And I have a question for Anish now. Uh, so Anish, I just wanted to ask you, like, what is the role of government in supporting the fintech? And do you think there's more uh, initiative which is required from the government to support the fintech? So government has done, you know, a lot uh, when, when, when you talk about interventions in fintech, like, you know, the, the NPCI, uh, which has the APS uh, payment system. It's all, you know, government based. And that, that works phenomenally well uh, in rural sector, as I mentioned earlier. And in terms of, you know, opening up, opening up various various aspects of uh, fintech industry where they, they can you know easy collaboration is possible where uh, banks can easily collaborate with uh, your fintech players you know there is not not much restriction there and uh, yes i think government has done a lot and and but there is something which would uh, also help is like for example jandan accounts right so jandan accounts were opened to bring the unbanked uh, to the banking sector but what we see in in the jandan accounts is most of them are in, in are not operable and most of the people do not use jandan accounts they only they have, maybe they have some subsidies coming in and uh, they they then use it but there is no operation of jandan account there is and now government has started charging will start char start, start charging the uh, jandan accounts if they have low maintenance balances and the government solves kind of some problems uh, with regard to you know payments infrastructure or maybe the lending in infrastructure where they came up with a you know e mudra loan for the rural masses where a local uh, uh, you know entrepreneur uh, village level entrepreneurs can get you know easy access to credit but government needs to do more when it comes to you know savings and investment uh, for the rural masses, there there are there are no products uh, specifically for the rural masses. Even your Indian Post Office, uh, which is a government undertaking, uh, does not does, doesn't have that you know tech capacity or doesn't have that uh, you know product suited for the rural masses that it serves. And similarly with insurance, government needs to do more uh, with ins pushing insurance into the rural uh, ecosystem. So I would say uh, it, it does well on payments and lending, but doesn't do very well in the, you know, wealth tech or in short tech. Thank you. Thank you, Anish. Uh, and I have a same uh, question for Sridhar, sir. Like, what are your uh, thoughts about it? I think um, over the last 10 years, we have really, you know, thanks to a couple of visionaries, uh, you know, uh, rightfully in their own, um, you know, achievements. As a country, we have really leapt. Um, you know, we've taken some major strides. So UPI is an innovation uh, we can talk about all day, um, it, it, though it has a few glitches and pitfalls, uh, you know, in my own personal view, but uh, it's definitely something, a model that, for example, Brazil and a couple of other South American countries um, and others around the world are now going to adopt. Uh, and uh, they've come to study it uh, to see uh, how we built the rails, if you will. Um, the world was, uh, digital was pretty much limited to two major card service providers for, for decades, right? I mean, uh, the, everybody's digital payment was running on two rails. Uh, you, uh, you know the names, you know, they're, they're pretty global and, you know, they're only two major ones. So when you build a parallel rail uh, for a country, um, and, uh, you know, uh, not, uh, not limited, if you will, more democratized, more open, uh, then, you know, you create some pretty massive opportunities. So, uh, so the adoption of UPI is something to be proud of and to write home about. Um, but then you have the stack, right? I mean, thanks to uh, the investments made, uh, you have the stack. Uh, uh, Anish talked about uh, AEPS, but I, I would expand that more to the Jamstack, um, uh, which enables uh, fintechs to work and build applications and solutions around it. And then and now we have, um, you know, a complete banking stack, uh, stack built 
for the same purpose as well for you know for whether you want to do ekyc uh to all the way to provisioning an account uh and, and multiple other transaction supports on the account are now enabled through these uh tech solutions and these are uh, i wouldn't say purely government but i would say they're quasi government uh because there's there are entities uh, npci is basically a consortium of banks uh and uh, so there are entities that are involved government is obviously you know helping and pushing it uh, rbi is actively rbi is reserve bank of india sorry bobby uh, which is uh, actively engaged in ensuring safety and uh, measures around it uh so there is uh, there's involvement and they have uh, there's an active participation and uh, now we have a more of a collaborative environment over the last 10 15 years in bringing these technologies to market and in in bringing infrastructure to market uh that only the size and scale of a government backed entity can and now you have a whole number of startups hundreds and thousands of startups uh feeding off of that and creating that environment and that community if you will uh to build uh solutions and solve problems and and there's there's a number of them i mean uh, we can uh, talk ad nauseum about it so so yeah they've done they they're doing their part they've done their part and we continue to learn and improve and that's that's very rare we've never been a culture of uh you know uh, learning from our mistakes so uh, one example is there's a threshold on uh UPI transactions that everybody is complaining about so that one doesn't hog all the all the um, infrastructure if you will so but then that has to be sorted out over time that's one example but we are learning right and we we're, we're making mistakes we're, we're seeing errors in UPI transactions i don't know how many of you know the error rates and things like that but i've recently faced quite a lot of issues uh, and uh, and i've opened up a number of tickets on that uh on, from a consumer standpoint and i've struggled with it over the last couple of weeks frankly so uh those are you know teething issues that we will sort through but again we we have become a learning society uh willing to make changes willing to adapt willing to be open a little bit so that's it's all positive so and and there is an influence of the government in it irrespective of who's in power yeah thank you <laughs> So I have similar question for Bobby. Like, do you have something to add from Indonesian perspective in this regard? Okay, thank you so much uh, for the question. I think um, it's hard uh, to talk about uh, fintech fintech regulation, uh, uh, especially uh, for Indonesia. We have like uh, five until seven years uh, later. Uh, uh, five uh until seven years uh the past uh, the past five years uh we have like uh we we just uh we just established uh some of uh fintech i think it's hard to talk about uh, fintech regulation uh as per now uh for indonesia i think better uh, to break down high level approach like for risk management and the product base and uh complete them uh with specific uh with the specific regulation like uh, anti money laundering but uh, if i can say uh if uh it will it will it will be better if uh, the financial regulator uh, have like four main mandates uh actually for uh for the fintechs uh like financial stability the prudential regulation uh conduct and the fairness competition and development uh, uh the four of uh mandates a uh, four of these mandates i think uh will make uh our fintech uh financial uh, technology will run smoothly uh in the future i But, also have a question related to all of the situation so uh, do you think in the fintech space there is something called cartel system like how are the regulations like how is government supporting something like if uh things and uh, what are the regulations related to if some they are major players in fintech we have google uh, like a major player so how are the regulations supporting the other small players in fintech actually uh, in indonesia uh, fintech just uh, established like uh, five uh, uh, for the five, five uh, for the past uh, five years i think um, we uh, like uh, our ojk or financial uh, financial authority uh, 
uh, was not uh, already uh, ready uh, to uh, make uh, some the regulation, the more detail about uh, the, the regulation about fintech. But uh, uh, actually in Indonesia, uh, we have like, uh, uh, just uh, have like, uh, consultative paper uh, about uh, about the fintech, but uh, it's not already published. But if I can say uh, like uh, four mandates uh, that I will mean that uh, I mentioned before is like the best way uh, to uh, make our fintech run smoothly in the future. But uh, in Indonesia, we specific mention we don't uh, we don't have a specific mention about. Uh, to to uh, have one regulation specific uh, in fintech, we don't have uh, we don't have any uh, specific regulation to uh, regulate our fintech. That's why I think uh, in Indonesia we have like uh, the new market, the new wider market uh, in uh, fintech, because uh, we have uh, we don't have like uh, we don't have like uh, any uh, specific regulation to regulate our fintech. But we have like uh, the largest one of the largest population in the world. But uh, in other ways, we have like uh, some of the poor people. Uh, they uh, actually they they uh, are they, uh, unbankable and also uh, they they uh, they don't they don't have uh, like mobile phone. That's why I think uh, fintech uh, will be growing uh, faster in Indonesia. Uh, but I think I believe uh, like. To, uh, until three years later, uh, Indonesia will uh, have like a specific regulation about our fintech. But for now, uh, we don't have it. So Anish and Sridhar, sir, I want to ask a similar question to you. Like we have a major player like Google in mm -hmm. India. So what do you think? Uh, like, is there any regulatory help we are getting or is there any cartel system or something? Like, how are we managing this competition in FinTech? So NPCI has said, yeah. Go ahead, Amish, go ahead. Yeah. So NPI, NPCI has set uh, UPI limit, market share limits on these companies. So like, I think uh, right now, PhonePay or, or, or Google have more than 80% you know, of the market share in terms of UPI limits. And they have been told by the NPCI to bring it down to about 25 or 30%. So that's, that's how you know, a government is doing in, in order to regulate uh, the bigger players because cartel is, cartel is not formed. Okay. And uh, Sridhar sir and Anish, I also have a follow-up question. So do we see a lot of mergers and acquisition in FinTech world in near future because like everyone is growing and they have to compete with these industries do you foresee any mergers consolidation in fintech um I, I, it's kind of early i mean i think we are still in the uh, very very nascent days of uh, growth um as opportunities present themselves like I said, peer-to-peer -peer lending has already gone through a boom and bust cycle, uh, particularly China is, was a great example of, uh, uh, to reflect on. Um, you will see uh, you know, similar consolidation. Uh, you're seeing acquisition, PayU announced an acquisition a couple of days ago uh, from a Southeast Asian um, firm, of a Southeast Asian firm. And again, uh, that Southeast Asian firm provided wallet and loyalty offerings, which PayU had a huge gap Pay you was purely a payment gateway offering. So when it added that, uh, you know, uh, it, it enables pay you to uh, provide a more comprehensive offering to, to the consumer, right? So, so again, you will see that kind of gap filling, uh, very strategic acquisitions, and a lot of them are here to stay. A um, lot of payment gateways are trying to become neobanks. Um, so again, this notion of neobank is is yet to be proven out uh, and and really be uh, you know rolled out in the market. So you'll see some shakeout there. Not a lot of them can sustain themselves for a long period of time. Um, underlying all this is is an age old banking system and technology infrastructure. So um, that is not going away anytime soon. Uh, and uh, the partnerships and the and the uh, opportunities uh, that each one uh, you know knocks on. 
uh, will be depending on their strength to sustain for a long period of time. Um, there's still lots of problems to solve and lots of opportunities. And hence you will see, you know, new ones emerging, but at the same time, strategic acquisitions happening, uh, you know, time to time. We've already had another uh, Grab, I think, announced something today. Uh, Grab is from Southeast Asia. So uh, there was, there was a, there's some activity, but you won't see, uh, you know, complete um, roll up into one or two players. That's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, you'll see thousands of players, but uh, strategic acquisitions to fill, uh, you know, gaps in their portfolio uh, happen over a period of time, in my view. Thank you, Sridhar. Thank you, uh, Bobby. Thank you, Anish. Like, uh, it was very insightful. Like, I have, like, I am a founder of a career consultancy and I have a question for my learners. Like, if a student or a college graduate so one wants to be a part of fintech he can be from commerce background or technology background like how can that person be part of fintech what are the ways to enter fintech um should i take a stab at it and or bobby or anish they are on mute okay um my my view is to uh, get the basics and the fundamentals first right i mean uh, that's always a challenge don't get carried away by these uh, buzz verticals you know or terms fintech doesn't mean anything unless you solve problems within the financial domain so unless you use tech to solve problems within the financial domain so uh, being part of fintech doesn't mean anything uh, unless you have uh, you know a comprehensive grasp of either deep insights into technology and the experience in technology or deep insights into the financial domain and you know experience in the financial domain. So either or or both, and and then if you're if you have both, you're in a sweet spot. Um, and uh, and any in in any domain that is true today. So unless you have that level of technology uh, insights and and knowledge, uh, for you to have a sustainable growth path in your career is going to be hard. Whether you talk about ed tech, fintech, health tech, you know and you can add tech to everything. So it just, the list just goes on. So my, my two cents would be to focus on the basics, get your, um, get your degree, diploma, education in, in fundamentally a sound uh, domain that you're interested in. And in, in this case, if it is finance, it be it finance, in case you're interested in the engineering aspects of it, get your education in engineering or get, get specialization in engineering after whatever basic education you have completed. And then uh, look for opportunities that, you know, bridge uh, these two, whether you want to work a few years in a startup or, or you want to work in a corporate that is focused in this area. So you'll have to just chart your course, find opportunities that are aligned with your goals. And first of all, discover the first few years if you really like this domain if you like the subject if you if it thrills you to solve problems in this space so uh, that's what i would uh, you know leave people with thank you thank you Sridhar. and uh, for bobby i have a question like uh, follow up to this only so what do you think like you are in consultancy so what what are the skills which are highly in demand and which a company is looking for right now uh, for uh, sorry, could you repeat again? Uh, uh, sorry. So, what are the skills like which are highly in demand? Like a like a consultant. What are the skills a company is looking for in a consultant right now? Uh, for the fintech. For fintech. For fintech. Okay. Uh, I think uh, for now, uh, actually for consultancy, uh, we are looking for we uh, actually we are uh, looking for uh, the fintech. Uh, I think for Indonesia, uh, for now, uh, we have like uh, more attention uh, to uh, the fintech, like uh, P2P, uh, P2P lending. Uh, I think uh, some of the uh, some of uh, our consultancy and our, our uh, investor in Indonesia uh, have like uh, more attention uh, to get uh, their money uh, and their their uh, like. Uh, have some uh, consultancy uh, in uh, fintech, especially uh, in peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending. That's why uh, 
uh, in Indonesia, uh, fintech, especially uh, P2P, uh, is one of the largest uh, fintech uh, in Indonesia. Uh, between uh, like uh, educational fintech, like uh, Ruang Guru, uh, if you if you know it, uh, uh, because in Indonesia we have like uh, some of millennials people uh, uh, in uh, the white uh, amount. That's why uh, educational uh, educational. Uh, if I if I uh, rank uh, the fintech, number one is P2P lending, and then number two uh, educational uh, fintech. And then number three, uh, if you have uh, like healthcare uh, fintech, uh, like. Uh, Hello doctor or hello doctor. That's why uh, I think uh, in Indonesia we have like the three of us, like uh, P2P lending and then uh, educational uh, fintech and also uh, healthcare fintech. Thank you, thank you, Bobby and Anish. I have a question for you, like a follow up thing only. So, what yep. do you think? Uh, like you are working in financial inclusion. So, what do you think are the resource mismatch at the ground level, and what skills you can add? Or what skills do you like? Future skills you want should be there, mm -hmm. so that there's a uh, there's a uh, the resource mismatch is solved. I think the biggest uh, uh, challenge in this would be to have a mixture like a, a candidate like a person should be you know inclined towards social impact and have a basic financial ecosystem knowledge, you know. So I, I meet people, you know, either they are very socially inclined, but have no clue about basics of financial ecosystem or people who are, who have know the financial ecosystem, but are not socially inclined. So that's a skill mismatch, uh, you know, I encounter yeah, every time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anish. And uh, so uh, over to you, Anupam, if we have any questions from the attendees, we can take also them Definitely. So what an extraordinary panel discussion going on. And uh, to the panelists, please go through the chat section too. There are questions for you. So Pulkit Agrawal has asked, uh, the question is for Sridhar Ji and Anish. Uh, how has COVID-19 impacted your business, uh, positively or negatively? And how are you addressing some of the challenges? So Anish, would you like to take it? Sure. So the COVID-19 has, you know, both, you know, positively and negatively impacted uh, some aspects of our business. So I would talk about, you know, savings and insurance. So the positive thing is, you know, people, because of COVID, people are more aware, you know, why should they save? You know, why the need of saving is there? Or, you know, why you should have insurance? So that's a very positive impact. The uh, a first level of education or first level of awareness is is already done during the COVID because people have struggled. So so that's a one positive. The second would be the negative would be now the intention is there to save, but they lack the money because of their you know businesses being not growing or not su sustainable. So the intention is there, but you know the money in their pockets is is less which is improving over month on month over the past couple of months, which we are seeing so that that has been, you know, positively impacted and negatively impacted and in terms of lending business, uh, lending business is generally hasn't been impacted uh, very, very severely. And we had a couple of months where uh, the collection was a bit difficult, but now the collections are back to normal and the disbursements are back to normal as usual. Great, great, great. Uh, Shrida ji, please go ahead. Um, I think early on it was fairly significantly negative uh, to start off with in the initial dip. Um, uh, I, one of the hats I wear is we do a lot of M&A uh, uh, services for uh, you know strategic acquisitions, and one of the areas we were focused on was healthcare analytics, and uh, you know the buyouts conversations pretty much just dried up. Uh, no business was held in that domain for quite some time. Uh, in lending, uh, personally, I saw a lot of impact. Um, I was experimenting with a lot of platforms uh, myself as a consumer, uh, not as part of our business, but you know, looking looking at uh, these platforms to uh, learn and uh, see where I should focus on in, in some of the ventures we, when we roll them out. So the timing was kind of interesting. So. Uh, 
I had negative returns on most of my investments in in that in that domain. So that was kind of a, a setback. Um, most of the um, uh, conversations uh, kind of came to a halt in terms of deal making. You know, any any time there was a potential for a sale or an early stage sale, in the, particularly in the enterprise space, uh, there was a lot of slowdown for at least about five to six months till you know everything cleared into August, September uh, time frame, And then people decided what to do. Uh, October, November, December, the last quarter was an interesting one. And then, uh, you know, again, uh, now this quarter is going to be uh, you know, pretty negative uh, going forward, uh, in my view. Um, and finally, I would say that um, the positive aspects were we were able to roll out new businesses. So we created something called imenu.in for contactless dining in the in the hospitality space uh, and uh, and a number of other solutions that we were able to roll out and achieve some degree of scale and traction that we couldn't have uh, had this not happened. So we rolled out new products and new solutions that were more uh, you know uh, for this uh, environment going forward in the in terms of volatility, the uncertainty, and uh, in the needs of uh, contactless uh, business, if you will. Yeah, so yes, I can say that COVID, COVID has impacted a lot of business. COVID has impacted a lot of people. But yes, no doubt FinTech is growing. So uh, let's see. Yeah, also, like I and Tommy were discussing in the chat section. So we were wondering if FinTech is a noun or a verb. Bobby, I would like to hear from you. You're on mute, yeah. Yeah, would you love it again? Yeah, so uh, I and Tommy were uh, actually discussing in the chat uh -huh. section this thing that uh, we are thinking that we are wondering basically if fintech is a noun or a verb. Uh, it's a trick question. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit noun, but can be also, I think. But uh, uh, as I know, uh, fintech is a noun. Wait, any comments on that? Like, if, if, <laughs> how, how, or anyone of you would like to take it up? Any uh, of I agree with Bobby because fintech is a noun because it's making so much hustle. So only a noun, a proper noun, can make so much hustle in the life of people. So it's a proper noun. I feel. Okay, great, <laughs> Frida ji, please. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> It's a yes, buzzword. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> yeah. It's it's Anish? a con it's a conjoined twin. <laughs> yeah, I can say. Anish, would you like to say anything? I, yeah, I think it's it's a noun. Hello. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Got so, it. any of you, uh, any of the attendees, would like to comment on something, or if they want to ask any questions? <laughs> so there is a. Uh, in the chat. Tommy has a question. Yeah. Uh, Tommy, unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, please, Tommy. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> there you go. By the way, yeah, we by won't... the way, just, just a quick introduction about Tommy. Uh, actually, we I got to know about Bobby G, uh, Bobby Sir, uh, from Tommy uh, itself. So, Tommy is leading this initiative, actually. So, this is uh, one of our initiative for, like, we are uh, trying to create a regional community of misfits. So, this is a Southeast Asian community, and we have organized this panel discussion with the help of Tommy. So, kudos to Tommy, and please go ahead, Tommy. Thank you very much. It's great to uh, hear this discussion because fintech is a very broad uh, topic to be discussed. It's not only for one hour, and I believe that this is the start, and then it will be a very big topic that we can cover uh, in the next. And my questions to all the panelists is like, currently we know the fintech is going down at this moment, and then from your perspective, like, uh, what type of fintech? that will get a better head start when the COVID is going to end. Like uh, it's not called, uh, the COVID end completely, but it's go start to getting better and better. What do you think the type of FinTech will get a better head start? Thank you. So, like, 
We'll have Bobby go first. Okay. Uh, thank you, Tommy, for your question. I think um, the most uh, the most uh, valuable fintech uh, in this uh, pandemic uh, pandemic situation is like a healthcare uh, fintech. That's why I think uh, when pandemic uh, already end, uh, healthcare fintech I think uh, will be one of the most uh, fintech uh, that will grow uh, faster than the others. I think uh, I will choose uh, healthcare uh, fintech one uh, to be one of uh, the top fintech uh, will be run faster after uh, pandemic already at the end because they have uh, they actually uh, already have uh, infrastructure uh, when uh, and uh, survive uh, in the in this pandemic situation. And after the pandemic end, I think uh, healthcare uh, fintech will be one of the most uh, the top fintech. Thank you. I think we we basically have a year's worth of data, folks, already. So, um, I mean, if you haven't noticed, and you know, I, I would I would be surprised if none of you have noticed, but e-commerce has really exploded, uh, not just in in India or elsewhere, but it's in is exploded in Western uh, fronts like the US and Europe and South America um, in terms of a 10x, minimum 10x growth. We're talking 40x in some cases, but it's kind of crazy. If you look at the hockey stick over the last 12 months, March to March, we already have data and it's just surprising how much adoption there has been. Um, and I don't know, Bobby, if you're familiar, we had a we had an event in 2016 called demonetization in India, where we got rid of all the currency overnight and uh, we printed new currencies. And that was an event, uh, an inflection point, if you will. Uh, and a lot of there was a lot of talk around digitization because of that. So we got rid of all the paper currency that existed and printed new ones, new denominations and new currencies. But uh, over the last 12 months, I think this has had a much larger impact in uh, you know, pushing things digital. Uh, so in terms of what we get the better head start, I think e-commerce already has, uh, you know, has, has gone from a 2% to a 6% volume of retail and then you know, looking at a 14% volume of retail, which is still nothing in, the, in terms of trillions of dollars that flow through uh, retail transactions. So it's already happened, it's here. Uh, and just visualize if this is, this is the kind of graph that you see in the last 12 months, and it's still just, you know, scratching the surface of what is, po what is possible just see what the potential is in the coming, uh, you know, in the coming years. So I think the next five years, the digitization trend will continue. Uh, the ratio and proportions will grow. Um, like just on my street, uh, I was the only guy and, and, and all my neighbors were probably wondering why does this guy keep getting brown boxes all the time, right? I mean, I was the only guy, you know, I, I lived in the US for, for the longest of times. Uh, I was very used to paying by by digital currency or card, uh, and I was very used to transacting online um, for for decades. And then when I come here, nobody's buying online. So you know, just in the last couple of years, um, from being the only guy who used to shop online and get brown boxes, uh, now I have the entire street, about you know, eighty percent of them, uh, getting their groceries delivered. I can see that you know vis visibly. Uh, and I can see the impact uh, on the on the ground. So uh, commerce, I think, will continue uh, to hold forth. Uh, rest of them, you know, you know, they'll have they have their own space, and uh, there is opportunity everywhere. Lending is the second one, very quickly following commerce that uh, will will see all kinds of lending. I mean, not just uh, uh, you know home loans or you know, personal loans, but you'll see all kinds of lending happening. Uh, buy now, pay later will continue to have its effect. So. <clears throat> Definitely. So yes, at the end of the day, customer centric fintech solutions are going to win, no doubt. So yes, so I, yeah, Toby has something in the chat section too. 
yes totally agree with shridhar ji e-commerce enjoys huge push during covid 19 indonesia is going to have tokopedia e-commerce unicorn okay and gojek right hailing unicorn both is on the brink of merging into one entity right and uh, with this unicorn thing so i uh, like uh, oh i was so glad from- nobody mentioned unicorn all the whole hour nobody said unicorn i was so happy Definitely. My other favorite, other favorite peeve is ecosystem. If somebody says ecosystem, I'm going to hang up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So people say that, uh, like I think, and there are people, there are uh, industry experts who think that unicorn is a mythical animal. I don't know if it really exists or not, but uh, like uh, I saw this on Twitter that uh, do you want to be a unicorn or a cockroach? because cockroach is a survivor right and unicorn is a mythical animal like uh, you cannot start something just to be a be a uh, be an unicorn oh i love this oh. you just started <laughs> something so um, you know my comment on that is uh, it is a mythical animal and uh, they will continue to be mythical for most of us who are not unicorns so the moment you get to the other side you call yourself a, you know a cockroach because you've achieved the unicorn status right so cockroach became famous because of this theory and and sundar pichai you know once you know promoted that conversation so it's got a lot of uh, viral um, effect yes. thanks to uh, the teeny meenies in our world uh, adopting and uh, reading that stuff but um, you know um, so the idea is you need to be a cockroach first to get to being a horse and then being a unicorn of some of some caliber so uh, you you have to in the early days of a startup you you need to think and work um, to survive um, and once you achieve some traction and scale uh, you can you know depending on the opportunity and the problem you're solving uh, i think you can uh, get to some degree of uh, size and scale and you know those numbers don't you know those are just headlines and we are getting all carried away by it but uh, we we are into the age of decacons i mean unicorns don't matter anymore frankly uh decacons are are, are it uh, because of the size and scale of the market opportunity right i mean that's really what is determining the valuation although they may be insane or they may look insane in some cases and that's all part of the you know you get the baby the bath water all all mixed up and you know the market will sort itself out but we are definitely into the age of decacons Um, definitely definitely so bobby and anish do you want to comment something on that part by the way i heard this cockroach uh, part from uh, a book and uh, i guess the founder and ceo of uh, bookmyshow.com he commented this like uh, let's be cockroach let's not be unicorn so something like yeah bobby please go ahead uh actually i think uh uh when you uh build uh something uh you should start uh from uh the zero i think uh that's why uh when you uh when when the future uh you uh you already uh like a unicorn but uh, uh in the past or for now you start from cockroach that's why i think uh when you uh to uh, pursue or uh uh reach uh, something like unicorn level but for now you should start from uh, cockroach that's why uh, but uh, actually uh, uh, some of our uh, uh, being cockroach uh, I believe uh, cockroach uh, will survive uh, in any uh, situation something like that uh, especially uh, when you uh, when you resilience or survive uh, in pandemic uh, situation like uh, like uh, this uh, this year i believe uh, some of uh, the startup that uh, survive uh, in this year will be maybe uh, like the unicorn uh, some days definitely so let's be survivors yeah yes, <laughs> yes. so anish anything from your side any closing thought on it No, a lot has a lot has been covered uh, for cockroach and for unicorns. I think <laughs> I leave it at that. <laughs>
yeah sure so uh, with this like uh, in the interest of time also this was indeed uh, an extraordinary and an exceptional panel discussion so this unicorn and cockroach part will go on forever i guess so but yes i would like to share a token of thanks to all the attendees uh, including our dear panelist uh, shridhar ji from billion cart uh, and then uh, bobby from prospero solutions thank you for coming and joining in anish uh, from pink capital so i got to know about shridhar ji from linkedin uh, he is one of my connections and i'm grateful that i found him and then i got connected with bobby from tommy so thank you tommy <laughs> thank you bobby ji uh, and then anish so i got connected with you from kostav kostav is uh, one of your organizations part so Yeah. thanks to cost of here yeah yes and so thanks uh, ankita and thanks anupam and by the way ankita i'm really jealous you're the only one you know where time stands still you know at 2:35 or whatever that is <laughs> you know i'm like how the heck is that possible which part of the world is that right <laughs> i'm like at 2:35 i'm like here is 7 it's almost dinner time so we are like no i was just thinking that somewhere in the world it will be 2:35 so <laughs> But if the whole hour it's been two thirty-five. So. <laughs> She has a stopped time, I guess. Yeah. 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 So great, and yes, dear audience, thank you for making it interactive through your questions also. So we'll be organizing such uh, panel discussions, such workshops. community meetups ecosystem networking event uh, under misfits 2021 in the upcoming days in the upcoming weeks so guys stay tuned and keep in touch uh, let's do something together again uh, let's be let's get partner for something uh, related to fintech something related to finance or anything right so stay tuned and do follow us on our social media handles to your audience uh, so that you get to know about the the upcoming uh, events uh, by the way and also it would be great uh, okay so he has left so param param has some questions okay cool no no issues so on a good note uh, i would like to end this discussion here and uh, once again thank you so much uh, shridhar ji bobby anish and to all the dear audience and especially to the dear moderator thank you ankita for the moderation part you did it so well thank you so much thank you thank you thank you so much yeah. thank you thank you bye 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 yeah i'll share the feedback form on mail so please do fill it so that we can improve sure. ourselves bye. all right thank you so much thank you bye 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 Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah.